What's up, Epic Calculus? This is for you guys. I want to share with you a video on first derivative test for local extrema. Now, if you need the notes on this one, it's on page 209 and page 210 out of the book. So get yourself your book, add to it, highlight. Now, the key thing is that the first thing we have to set up with is saying if f is continuous. This doesn't work if the function is broken in any way, any gaps, jumps, removal, discontinuities, etc. So continuous is the first thing. Now, I've got this function. I just kind of sketched it with all of the different pieces you need to know about. But functions can look anything like this or not like this, provided that the key thing is they're continuous. Now, if you notice, I've got some highlights here on my function. Maybe zoom in, enhance. I've got blue highlight for where the function is um, increasing, pink highlight where the function is decreasing, and that continues throughout. Now, if the function's increasing, that means its first derivative is positive. If the function's decreasing, that means the first derivative is negative. What we have to do is look at those places where the function changes from a first derivative being positive to a first derivative being negative. And wherever that happens, that's a critical point. So like right here, at the change between f uh, derivative, first derivative being positive to negative, we have a maximum. And that's what this is specifying. In fact, specifically what I'm specifying is this is a nice like the top of a parabola. So in that situation, the derivative is zero because at the top of a parabola, the derivatives are flat uh, or representing a flat line. But in this section, this is a place where we have a, uh, not a discontinuity, but we have a place of non-differentiability, like a cusp or a corner. And in that place, the derivative at that critical point doesn't exist. It's still a critical point. Critical point is where the first derivative equals zero or doesn't exist. But we have to analyze whether or not on the left side or the right side, there's a change in the slope, a change in the nature of the first derivative. So increasing, derivative is positive. Decreasing, derivative is negative. When that change happens, you have some sort of an extreme, specifically in this case, a maximum. Over here, we have the reverse of that situation. We have decreasing, so the derivative is negative, to increasing, which means the derivative is positive. And in that moment, at that sp uh, spot, we have a critical point. The, it does exist. This is continuous and smooth, so therefore the derivative does exist. It's zero, but that is our way to justify, yo, that spot right there, that is also an extreme. Specifically, it's a minimum, maximum, minimum. We also have to test in other places, like right here. This is a place where there's a corner, and when you have a corner in the function, that is a place where the derivative does not exist, but there's no change to the negative nature, the, the decreasing nature of the function. The first derivative is negative. And then on the other side of that critical point, this first derivative is still negative. So that's not a maximum or a minimum. It's just a point of notice when you're talking about graphing these functions. Finally, leave it off with this, then I'll step back to the side so you can get the whole picture of this poster and put it down. On this side of the graph, we're approaching a closed uh, uh, bounded point on the graph. And this is also considered an extreme of the function locally to that area, mainly because we have nothing beyond the boundary of the function. <coughs> and we are seeing a derivative, like, like a positive derivative. So it's the graph is growing up to that point. Also, similarly, on this side, as we approach the left side of the graph of the interval, this point right here, the function is declining. And so therefore, at that interval, we have another local extreme, a local minimum and a local maximum. You have to specify all of them. That is the nature of these types of questions. We use calculus to determine the shape of the function. Here it is. Step to the side, pause the video for you, and capture this for your notes and your required standards.